Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you all, Aruba, the rest of the world. In the Second World War, when Allied forces were pushing to Germany, they were facing the River Rhine. And a young captain called Ted was requested into his commander's tent, and the commander was pointing at the map, and he said, Ted, you need to seize that bridge before tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. Is that clear? Aye, aye, sir. Absolutely clear. He left. Turned around, came back in, and said, why, sir? Why do I need to seize that bridge? And you probably now all think, Jan, what's the point? You're military. You're just following orders. True. A long time ago. Not anymore. And fortunately, this commander took the time to explain to Ted how important, how crucial this bridge was. And he said, we need to, we need to seize this bridge to push our armor, our logistics, into Germany, to close into Berlin and to end the war. So Ted now knew exactly what he had to do and why he had to do it. The how, the plan, is for himself. He's the specialist, so he will make the plan. And when he set off in the early hours and approaching the river, he took out his binoculars, looked at the bridge, and the bridge was destroyed. The bridge was blown up. So what now? Probably go back to your commander. I cannot accomplish the mission. Seize the bridge. No. He took out his map, looked at the map for another bridge, 10 clicks north, informing his commander, I will uh, seize another bridge tomorrow midday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the essence of mission command. Knowing exactly what you need to do and why you need to do it and keeping speed and momentum in the organization. And even better, for the commander in this case, that he can stay on the strategic level in realizing his vision. It's about what and why and leave the how to the individual. When I was working for companies like Walmart, Kenya Airways, Grower, that's by the way a German company making showers, toilets, faucets. Bacardi, that's a company that makes uh, white rum, we all know. <laughs> Good to hear. When I was working in these companies, it was my task to implement mission command on every level on every level, every individual formulating, developing their own mission in relation to the team's mission, in relation at end to the vision. And it was not easy, because you have to bring it down to simple words, so in their teams they understand it. And especially it's not simple when you're used to spreadsheets, forms, documents, mission statements and visions and whatever. And living in a world around systems, processes, procedures, it's a change. And it started with clarity about the word mission. Yes, for me it's clear. A goal, an aim, a bridge. But in companies, it's much harder. It's a mission statement, a slogan. A mission statement, one happy island, or slogan, is the reason for being. Walmart. Save people's money so they can live better. My Marine Corps, qua parat orbis, whenever, wherever in the world. A reason for being. But a mission for the military is a name, a goal that you want to achieve together with the team. And in the teams from these companies, they liked it. Finally, something simple we can use to align our teams and to create ownership because if you give the freedom to your team members, 
you're getting passionate, you're becoming more creative, you're getting focus, and they own it. And it's so much better than just targets like profit, sales, margin. More in relation to, do we want to be the best? Do we want to be leading? And mission command, it's not about leading, by the way, it's about winning. Because if we lose, we die. Isn't that right? And in companies, if you lose, well, you can lose your job. It's different, but it can be harsh. All these companies adopted it and said, this is what makes the difference. It taps into team members that they have the feeling that they really can contribute to a shared goal. Going back again in, in history, not to the Second World War, this is Bosnia. During the Civil War, actually Sarajevo. I was deployed with a team of six specialists, an observation party. I was deployed to establish an observation post overlooking Sarajevo in order to identify Serbian positions. Yeah, I say this on purpose pretty quickly. But the what and the why is in there. Deploy, establish, even better, an observation post in order to identify Serbian positions, in order to possibly, and we did it, engage them, and to end the siege, and to end the civil war, and bring peace to Yugoslavia. This team of six is normally operating for a couple of days or weeks in protection of a marine ground force. A company size, it's about 100 plus. Six specialists, individual trained on communication equipment, weapons, vehicles, radios. And now we were there on our own for days, weeks, months, threatened, not just from the Serbs, but the Muslims as well, to get us involved in that civil war. And what I saw was the best team behavior ever. I wasn't sure yet if it was mission command. Mission command was probably adopted by my Marine Corps in, I recall it, in the late 80s. But I felt it because I saw some great team behaviors. Creativeness, how do we work on the security? Captain was dropped, my rank. Jan, you need to learn this. This is the radar, because we have to do it together. We have to do it as a team. And when we came back to the Netherlands, and we had a dinner together, and I asked my Marines, I love speeches, although this is a little bit nervous, but I love it. <laughs> I said, can you say a few words when you're looking back to that operation in Bosnia, on the hills close to Sarajevo. And my Marine said in unison, it was the best time ever. Why? Because we had absolute clarity what we had to do and why we had to do it. And every individual had the freedom, the freedom to become very creative and passionate to accomplish this mission together. Now, that's where I work. In 2013, I started here. And I asked, as I do with every team, what is that we want to achieve at the end of the year? With Christmas, how do we toast? What is, what's our aim? What's our mission, our yearly goal? And pretty clear, we found out we need to be more visible. We need to work on our image. As you recall, there were some reductions in the defense, and it was about the base, it was about the unit. We need to strengthen our position on Aruba. Why? Because we're here for stability and security. That is so needed if you want to think about sustainable solutions. Security is the first thing you need to have, not only for tourism. And after that yearly goal, we had this vision. Aruba's maritime security partner. Simple. Although you don't see the year with it, 2017, I want to realize this. To become Aruba's maritime security partner. Maritime, Marines, Navy. But we were just receiving new, very sophisticated large, large boats. Partner, hey, the Coast Guard is our partner. But just, not, just not, not just the Coast Guard, the KPA, 
correction facilities. And when my team was starting to understand it, I saw some great things. And hopefully you saw it as well. I saw more media awareness. I saw exercises near Dakota, near the harbor, with the canine, with the local police. The Ronde van Aruba, I will call it the challenge run of Aruba. That should become what the Iron Man is for Hawaii, or the Heineken Regatta for St. Martin. That challenge run is growing, more professional. Last year, 120, I want to move to 200 teams at least the 8th of April next year. A public order seminar was organized. High altitude training from the former Westin Hotel. Even a game. We all know Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> Monopoly Aruba. And a few individuals in my team made sure we are on it. Not a very expensive street, by the way, in the beginning. <laughs> but maybe the best example in relation to stability and security that we found some internships for the social forming. It was not the sole uh, a project running on base. I asked the base, what can we do more? So my team members came up with internships on base. Now all good stuff, good stories, a little bit about a war, but there, of course there's a downside with mission command as well. Now let me call it challenges, actually two challenges. The first is, it is just a strategy, it's just a plan. And we say in the military context, no plan survives first contact. You still need great team behaviors. And for great team behaviors, you need a set of core values. We have dedication, unity and strength. That's where you can relate to, if it's about behaviors, what you need. Aruba has already this great mission statement, the slogan, One Happy Island. Maybe a set of core values can add some more. Something around determination, solidarity and cheerfulness, maybe. But the other, the other challenge is, as a leader, you have to sit on your hands. Because if you let your team members work out the how, it's their plan, not your plan. You're delegating, and they're making mistakes. Let it go. They're working on delivering their mission. Now, back to uh, sustainable solutions. What has Mission Command to do with sustainable solutions? Mission Command is a proven, sustainable philosophy to engage team members, to work on solutions, to get the creati creativeness out of your team. Mission Command is forcing you to make it simple. That's not easy. It's hard work to get it simple. But you need to make it simple. Otherwise, your team members won't understand it. And if they won't understand it, they cannot engage, and they will not, certainly not formulate or develop their submission towards the team mission. And I've experienced it with the Bosnia team, Walmart, Bacardi, whatever team. You need to make it simple. Because in the end, what is simple is clear, what is clear is understood, and what's understood gets done. <laughs>